Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. I've been working with the Mini Brute 2 for a bit, a couple performances, and I realized that this is a really, really good synth to show off the basics of subtractive synthesis, which is the method by which this thing makes sound and a lot of other synthesizers make sound. So I was like, what if I just walk through the basics of subtractive synthesis with the Mini Brute 2? I mean, would that be okay? I guess, I guess so. Okay, cool. So that's what we're doing today. I wanted to walk through... The basics of subtractive synthesis, which is a synthesis method that starts with harmonically rich uh, oscillators and uses things to subtract content from them to get a final sound um, using this synth because uh, it's very easy to look at and uh, sounds pretty good. So that's what we're going to do. Subtractive synthesis starts with what's called an oscillator and we have oscillators right here and those are what make sounds and usually it's passed through a filter, an envelope. And uh, these things adjust things like the harmonic content and the way that the sound fades in and out. So I guess what I'd like to do is start here in the oscillator mixer section and have you hear what oscillators sound like. There are different wave shapes for oscillators. Uh, we have sawtooth, we have square, we have triangle, we have noise. And over here on oscillator two, we have sine, sawtooth, and square. I'm going to go from the most basic, non-harmonically rich sound to uh, the more harmonically rich sound. So we'll start with oscillator two, and that would be a sine wave. So I've selected sine wave right there. And we get this smooth, curvy sine wave. We'll go to the next one over here, which is triangle. sine wave. You can hear that little buzziness at the top. That's a little bit more harmonically rich content. Next would be, I don't know, probably square. And then sawtooth. So we're going to stick with the uh, the sawtooth to go through the next part of this, and that's going to be the filter. I have this buzzy, buzzy sawtooth wave going on over here. I have cat hair all over my synth. I got a cat recently, and she is everywhere, let me tell you. Okay, so next thing is a filter, and uh, these do what they say. They filter out different parts of the sound, so... So there are different filter types. Right now we're in what's called low pass mode. And if you think about low pass, it's going to let the low frequencies pass. So there's kind of a shelf that goes and takes the high frequencies away. And um, there's a couple controls here. There's cutoff and resonance. And uh, we're just gonna turn the cutoff down real quick so you can hear what turning down a low pass filter sounds like. So you can hear those overtones, that high end kind of disappear as we turn the cutoff filter down in low pass mode. In band pass mode, it uh, acts as a band in the middle and kind of moves through the frequency spectrum like a bell. High pass does the opposite of low pass and lets high frequencies pass and you have to start it on the other end. So all the low frequency is there. and we filter it out. And then notch. You're not really gonna hear notch until I turn the resonance up. Resonance is a control that adds a sort of resonant peak at the filter edge. So in low pass mode, as opposed to just going like, uh, like this and filtering down, it's gonna develop a little peak there at the place where it starts filtering. And I'll put it at the mid here. Actually, I'll turn it all the way up. When I turn this up, you're gonna kinda hear sort of a brightness come into the sound kind of buzzy brightness. That's because it's creating that resonant peak at the top of the low pass filter. And I don't want this all the way up because it's gonna squelch like crazy when I turn that the cutoff frequency because I'm creating a really, really big peak. But I'm gonna turn this to like right here and you're gonna hear a squelchy sound as we go down. So that 
crazy elastic -y sound is the resonant peak of the low pass filter. And the resonance acts differently for each thing. In fact, it works really well on band pass. So, no resonance. With resonance. High pass also works really well with a bit of resonance. Band pass and high pass sound a little bit the same in this sense. So a notch, you absolutely need resonance because otherwise you're not getting any uh, anything. Whoa, too much. So now you can see that notch moving around. The more harmonics the sound has, so in the case of a harmonic, it would sound like a sawtooth or a square, you're going to get a lot of stuff going on. When you start moving to things that are less harmonically rich, like a triangle or a sine wave, you're not really going to get much from the filter. You can hear it filtering out that stuff there, but there's not really a lot of overtones to get rid of. One of the oscillators I forgot to mention is noise, which is always great to have. On the Mini Brute 2, you can mix these, so... get to that in a bit. We're going to stick with our good old friend, the sawtooth. We're going to keep our resonance at a reasonable amount and keep our cutoff frequency right about there. Okay, so we've covered the basics, the very basics of the oscillator section and the filter section, or what these do. The next thing you can do to subtract from your sound is to start affecting the volume of the sound. So right now, when I press the note down, the note comes in and when I let go of the note, it goes away. This is basically an incredibly basic envelope to shape the sound. There's really nothing going on. We have no release. We have nothing affecting the attack. And it's completely sustained when we hold down the note. So what can we do to make that more interesting? Well, we can start messing with the envelope section. And there's two envelopes on the Mini Brute 2. Using this thing over here, you can route them to a bunch of different stuff, but they are normaled, which means they are automatically routed to uh, this is routed to the volume of the oscillator section, and this is routed to the uh, filter section. So what does an envelope do? Well, this one, this more complex one over here, has attack, decay, sustain, and release. And our volume envelope over here, or our normal volume envelope, has attack and decay. So the most uh, simple way to show this is just to start turning these up. So let's mess with the attack. Turn it up. hear that that affects the attack or the onset of the wave. And that affects the fade or the decay. So this is actually doing a little bit more than just decay. This is actually kind of adding some release to it as well. So uh, we'll keep that up here to give us a little bit of decay. Let's go over to the ADSR envelope, which has attack, decay, sustain, and release. And attack's going to do the same thing that we have over there. But it's not going to do anything until I turn up this knob right here, which is the frequency modulation knob, which is normal to this ADSR envelope. So this envelope is going to affect this cutoff frequency using this knob as the attenuator or the amount that it will do. So I have to turn this up a bit and turn this down a little bit. Right now, nothing's happening. But... Now I turned up the attack, and you can hear that slope up that is affecting the opening of this filter because this envelope is modulating this filter by the amount that this knob is saying. All right, now I'm going to turn up the decay. So before, once the attack finished its slope, the cutoff frequency dropped back down because there was nothing telling it to hold there or decay there. So I'm going to turn up decay a bit and you're going to hear it kind of nicely slope off. Okay, so what if I wanted that uh, cutoff frequency to stay up where it was? Well, I can turn it to sustain up and that will tell the, uh, the envelope to hold that cutoff frequency there. Wow. <whistles> 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 
that's all well and good. But when I let go of the note, uh, the cutoff frequency drops off sharply. So I don't want that. I want it to fade out nicely because this is fading out nicely. So that means I'm going to turn up the release. A lot. And turn this up. Mm, let's see. So now we've got a much more expressive sound because we took these envelopes and shaped it to affect not only the volume of the oscillators, but also the way that the cutoff frequency for this thing uh, does a thing. And that's with only with one oscillator and a simple uh, sawtooth waveform. So if I wanted to, I could bring in the second oscillator. Wow, now I have a bass. And that's set to a non-harmonically rich sine wave right now. What if I wanted to turn it to something a little bit more burly, like a square wave? So by messing with the mixing of your harmonically rich oscillator sources and the frequency and resonance of the, of the uh, filter section and then shaping it with the envelopes, you already have a pretty interesting thing going on. I could play this for a long time and you'd probably get really annoyed, so I'm not going to do that. So we've covered oscillators, we've covered filters, and we've covered envelopes. And there are a couple other things on this synth that we'll talk about real quick, and that's the LFOs. And again, because this is semi-modular, you can patch all of these to other places using this right here, but this synth has a bunch of stuff normaled into it, which means that um, the connection between, let's say, this and this is, is just set within the synth. You can break it by patching it, but you don't necessarily need to. So these are called LFOs, and what an LFO is is a low-frequency oscillator. These oscillators work in the spectrum that we can hear. These oscillators work in a much lower spectrum. And if you think of an oscillator as this sine wave that we were messing with before, there's probably a waveform going on over here to show you what a, uh, the oscillator is doing. And you can see that it's a sine wave. So if we slowed that sine wave really, really low, slow down, it would get longer. And that's what a low frequency oscillator is. It's something that looks like a sine wave, unless you change its wave shape. And uh, you can set it to affect other things, which is pretty dope. So I'm gonna patch LFO one here, low frequency oscillator one, through what's called an attenuator, doo, 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 which allows me to control the amount of it and out of that attenuator into the pitch of our first oscillator so we can really get a sense of what it's doing. Where is that? Right here. Okay, I'm gonna start turning up the rate here and... Okay, so what I did was I turned up the attenuator that we've got this patch through. So now I've increased the modulation that this LFO is doing to this oscillator right here, the pitch. And you can hear that we're kind of got this crazy sweep going on right now, like an like a ambulance or something like that. And that's because this LFO is slowly sweeping through uh, the range that is affecting this pitch. Now I can turn this up and it will go faster. And we're going to use this attenuator to drop the range a little bit. And we're going to keep on going faster. Things, things get a little weird there, don't they? All right, and then we're going to patch it to the attenuator again. And out of that into the filter. Cutoff. We already have the filter being modulated by this envelope here with this knob. <laughs> Now we're going to have it modulated by the LFO. Wow, 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 wow,
So that's an LFO modulating the cutoff frequency. And it's fun. You should do that all the time. Okay, to recap, we took our oscillators, our sound sources, and we ran them through a filter. And we had these envelopes modulate the filter and the volume of these. So we have a sound. All right, so there's a couple other things that we can talk about here. Let's go back to the oscillator section and just kind of run through these things. Some of these are unique to the Mini Brute and I'll make sure to call that out. Some of these are more uh, universal and uh, Glide is one of those. Actually, let's start at Tune. So Tune, Fine Tune here is going to tune this oscillator. And you can tune it to pretty much any pitch and pitches in between with a very uh, soft knob like this. Soft, soft knob. It's uh, it's not clicked. It doesn't uh, click to different pitches. So you can get some uh, weird stuff going on there. And you can hear the two frequencies beating against each other when they're kind of close. And that's kind of cool. It's one of the things I like about the Mini Brute 2 uh, as opposed to some things that are don't let you fine tune quite as much is that you can get some weird in between places. There's a nice perfect fifth or fourth, fifth, probably fifth. So let's turn this back to a zip. And you can hear kind of a weird flanging effect there. That's because the pitches are not quite perfect. There we go. Okay. Glide um, introduces a glide between different notes. Uh, so if I want to go from here to here right now, there's... Nothing's happening with the pitch, it's just going directly there. The more glide I have, the longer it takes to get up to different notes. This is also called portamento in some cases. If you turn it way up, it's just gonna take forever. Turn that back down. Okay, pulse width is uh, something that only works on square waves. So we're gonna turn the square wave up and turn oscillator two down so you can hear it. And uh, if you think about a square wave as a square, because it is, pulse width makes the actual square pulse shrink and get bigger. So we're going to thin out that square wave uh, pulse as we turn this. So we go from sort of a big, full thing to this tiny little chip tuny soundy thing. And in between, we get this cool flanger effect. Ooh. On the Mini Brute, uh, there is an automatic normal for pulse width modulation, which is this thing sweeping back and forth on its own from LFO1. change the wave shape of LFO1 to have one of these shapes if I want. So there's Sawtooth. You can hear it kind of go up and then ramp down. It's a square wave. And this is kind of cool if we turn up the release. Kind of gives us a little chip tomb thing. And then there's a couple noisy random ones that kind of just go all over the place. Smooth noise, smooth random. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's stepped random. So that's pulse width modulation and pulse width. And these are great to have on a synth if you can get them. They offer, as you can hear, a lot of cool 
sound design opportunities. So let's go back to there, turn our oscillator up again. So uh, we had tune over here. We have tune over here for oscillator two. I know I'm skipping over. So one of the things that I do a lot with uh, synths that have a couple different oscillators, if I want to, is t it's pitch down VCO to an octave, and now I have a bass, basically. That's just the sawtooth from over here, but let me bring this in. It's burly. Sine waves are really good to do that uh, that bass thing with because they're very nice. Pure, pure boys, pure nice boys to put on the bottom. Uh, the Mini Brute allows you to go from um, fine tuning with this second oscillator to a uh, very large range. A little harder to dial it in, but uh, you get a, a much larger range of octaves you can play with. So let's go back to fine. Do that. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, the metalizer is something that only works on the triangle wave, and it's something that is unique to the Mini Brutes. Um, it is sort of a folder, like a wave shaper. I'm not really going to be able to explain it very well, but I'll just let you hear it. It's a really, really cool effect. And then below that, the modulation uh, knob for this is normal to velocity, which is how hard you hit the key. So let's hear what that sounds like if I turn this up. All the way. You can hear that really cool harmonic thing going on. It almost sounds like it's changing pitch, but it's not. I love the metalizer. It's very, very cool. Okay, over here we have FM, which is frequency modulation of between these two things. Um, FM synthesis is a whole nother realm. We're not getting into it. This is subtractive synthesis, but it's sometimes you'll see synths have the ability, a subtractive synths have the ability to modulate uh, oscillator one with oscillator two. And uh, we're just going to turn this up. It gets really growly and cool. Uh, I use this a lot in the performances that I did with this thing recently. <laughs> So right now the frequency of oscillator two is manipulating the, the frequencies and the response of oscillator one. Pretty nasty, right? You can do all kinds of fun stuff with that. Ultrasaw is something that only works on saw waves. And it's kind of a doubling multiple uh, multiplier of the saw wave itself. So let's just turn that up real quick. Uh, this is unique to the Mini Brute 2, if I remember correctly. That's a no normal saw wave. Now you kind of hear it that it's got this flanging, almost pulse width modulation thing going on there. So that's kind of cool. We already covered pulse width modulation and metal mod. So that's the section for VCO1 there. We've done it all. Good job, guys. Very proud of you. So to recap, we started with voltage controlled oscillators and we uh, ran them through a filter to subtract some of their harmonic content in an interesting way. We used envelopes to shape not only the volume of those oscillators' responses, but also the way that they're modulated by the filter. We used LFOs to affect things like the filter or whatever we wanted to over here. 
And we kind of ran through some of the th interesting things you can do with oscillators, like changing the pulse width, or in some cases, uh, things unique to different synths, like wave folding with metalizers and uh, the ultrasaw thing. And uh, that is kind of the basics of a subtractive synthesizer. Um, we have a couple other things over here, just volume. <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. The brute factor is kind of a distortion thing that's unique to the mini brute. If I remember correctly, I think it feeds the output of the synth back into the input. That's a little crazy there, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, we have a pitch bend down here and a mod wheel that you can patch to other things too. But that that's it. We've covered uh, we've covered subtractive synthesis uh, in the way that is presented by the Mini Brute 2. With these options, you can do all kinds of shit. You can do tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, if you want to hear uh, some things that I did with this, uh, <laughs> check out the performances that I did. Uh, I'll put a link for them at the end of this video or something like that. I hope this has been informative. I think that, you know, getting a basic mono synth, meaning it can only play one note at once, like the Mini Brute 2 or the Novation Base Station 2, or even one of the older Brutes, is an amazing way to get to know uh, synthesis, um, subtractive synthesis specifically. And, uh, you know, just experiment and have fun and make music, because ultimately, theoretically, that's what this is about. Though they are pretty, aren't they? Mm hmm.